I've worked out that this whole room is seven and a half meters long by about four and a half meters wide, which works out about 33, 34 square meters. Times that by three coats, and that is 102. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome, Ryan here from the London Craftsman. Right, today's video is a little bit different. I'm in my house, I'm standing on the job, which I'm just about to take on, it's my floor. And it's in massive need of being done uh, for at least a year or two. Um, the lac has been flaking off directly from the actual timber underneath. The floor is actually made out of ply. When I built the extension eight or 10 years ago, I believe, I got a batch of ply, well, I got a huge batch. Um, all this stuff was from a filming studio, so it was relatively good condition. So I made my doors that you can see behind me with the pine ply. I also cut the ply into strips to make the floor. So they're just about 125 mil wide. And then I just cut them into random lengths and glued them down. Once it was glued down, I lacquered it. So I'll go over the lacquers that I did use and that I am going to use. But today is all about getting it back up because the lacquer is literally flaking off of your nail. So that's the job today. Got everything out, got all the tools out, barring just covering important stuff. And yeah, without wasting too much time, let's get the job on the road. So this is the car that created all the damage. The kids were just going around the table in circles, just zinging around and just carving it up. It's got rough wheels at the bottom. As you can see, the actual lacquer has come off in loads of places and it's just chipped off in a layer. This floor has had about five or six coats in total now. So it's really built up, but maybe it might have got brittle over time. But you could probably just see in the light all the, all the patches that really need doing. There's a load, you know, there's patches here. There's batches over here and um, yeah, it's not looking great. So that's what we are trying to do today, trying to sand that back. The patches that I do sand back are probably going to go a little bit lighter when I do sand them. Yeah, who cares? I don't mind that as long as it's been lacquered and protected. So we do have the sim to protect, um, but yeah, that is a bit of a pain. It's just the hardest part is figuring out where to stop the lacquer and whether I just go right up to the sim all the way around or whether I stop on a floorboard. That is the hardest part. I think I'm going to remove the PC. But other than that, I just need to ping off these plimps and just wrap up the deck. So maybe just put some plastic over the kitchen, depending if I can be bothered to do that or not. And this is all the stuff that's out, filled up my front room also. We are going to be using masking film and it comes in a massive roll so the roll that i've got is the five meters by 120 meter roll all the prep is done or as well as i can be bothered to it's only my house so if it was customers i'd go that extra little bit further yeah it's just to catch all the fine dust i guess um this stuff does attract it as well so any fine dust in the air should just get attracted to the plastic um so that's covered i need to actually cover the electrics there that's covered not worried about that Let's go over um, bits and pieces that I have. So I use this premium clear masking film, masking tape um, to sand the floor back. We've got the Trends Hoover with um, a four or five meter hose, which is quite handy. We're gonna plug the hose into our Makita sander. It's a five inch. We've got a couple of different types actually. We've got the zirconium and we've got aluminium oxide. Um, to be honest, I'm not really too sure on the difference, but um, yeah, we've got different grades. We've got 80, 120, 240 and this is what they all kind of look like but i'm most likely going to go for the 120 240 is probably going to be a bit smooth at least for the beginning and um, just to get it all back if i get any spots that are a bit crappy i'll go over with 80. all of this floor was really light when i first laid it and it's gone dark so the sun changes it makes it go more yellow um yeah we've got a couple of brushes we've got a little air duster that's quite handy um i'll leave a, a video link above some brushes to go around the outside, disposable. So once I've sanded back, ready to lacquer, I'm gonna do the perimeter first and then I'm gonna work my way in with the roller. And then roller-wise, we've got a roller on a stick. We've got an old tray, which I'm not too happy about. I'm gonna to have to try and clean it up. Um, if not, I'm gonna to have to put a bag over it and um, yeah, use the bag. I'm using a gloss roller, okay? So you can buy these in nine inches. And this is the lacquer we're going for. It's a two-part, it's a Morels, it's 30% sheen. And because I think I use 30%, 
and I'm hoping I've got that right because I'm going around that sim in a weird way so I just don't want it to be visible once it's finished so there's certain parts that I'm not going to sand around that area I don't want it to look like there's a patch but it is what it is I suppose um, but it's nine to one so you mix one part of that nine of this this will set this um, and then yeah I forgot my mixing cup we've got a mixing cup um, in the workshop I have to go and grab that but we're going to go ahead now and start sanding get the sander set up put a 120 disc in it and just get going so I've got a 120 disc in there right now on there and just going to set that up to the hoover this hoover should start and stop but I'm just going to work in the corner work my way out I'm gonna give it a good old going over this lacquer is really tough where it hasn't tripped it's still really solid <laughs> so i'm about three hours in it's about 11 started at about eight and it's taken a little bit longer than i thought these patches where they're just flaking really a bugger to sort of blend them in and feather it in because there's a step it's had so many layers of lacquer over the years um it's trying to blend those in and we've got lots of patches you can just see all the whites or the lighter pine that is where I've just gone heavy I'd rather just go all the way back to pine um, and have it looking patchy than just skimming over it and then it happening again I've also upped the grit so didn't even attempt to do 240 I did a couple of 120s over this area um, and as soon as I started hitting the dodgy stuff I swapped over to an 80 and then I realized I should have just done 80 anyway but that's all fine. This stuff over here wasn't too bad. The lacquer was nice and solid on it. Um, so yeah, about three hours in, I'd say realistically another two, you know, crack on and do exactly what I've done. As you can see, I've just been working across like so all the way, taking the threshold off of the doorway. We'll get it finished and I'll show you it finished in a bit. Okay. But I am coming up to the, the most worn part section. So we're going to see lots more light pine. Right, so I'm running a little bit behind. Um, I did want to get three coats on today. It's quick drying lacquer, but I still don't think I'm going to get three coats done. So all the sanding is now done. I'm just going around with a hoover, making sure all the dust is up, going around all the edges. Not sure if I'm going to mask up. I might just do it freehand to save a little bit of time because what I'm going to do first is go around the edges with the lacquer, then go in the inside with the roller. So yeah, just got the wand on the hoover. And I'm going to have the brush go around all the edges, make sure no dust is going to fall in as I'm lacquering. And away we go. So another 20 minutes, half an hour, and we should have it ready to lacquer. And you can see how many patches there are now. Quite a few, and these took a fair amount of time. Let's go around the other side. So it's mainly down this end. So that end wasn't affected as much. Um, I just thought that where the lacquer had come off, it had gone a little bit dirty because it was unprotected softwood. I just went hard. I just didn't want to lacquer over any dirt. Well, here's an example here. It's a little bit dirty underneath. But how far do you go, you know? I mean, there's only three mil, four mil worth of softwood to start with. It's been sanded back once before. Um, yeah, so it shouldn't be as obvious once I put the lacquer on the top is a bit like the wet look it will make it look all uniform but let's go ahead and hoover all set up now about to start filling up the lacquer mixing it up so on the cup um it's got about half a litre which is 500 550 mil um this is a nine to one ratio let's just imagine it was 10 to one if i go to the 500 and um, with my lacquer then the hardener just a smaller bottle that will fill it up to 550 ish okay so about 10 so uh, so i'm basically going to just under the 550 mark total um so the lacquer this part will go up to 500 and then this will just go slightly under the 550 mark it will take a few mils not going to make much difference so um yeah we've got to work fastish for this i mean it's got a usable life of 36 hours apparently as long as it's covered um but i still want to just go around the perimeter and get a coat on with the next half an hour or so it's pretty stinky as well I'm hoping that one of these or two of these will do um, for one coat um, just for speed. So, yeah, let's mix it up. So we're at uh, just over 500 there. Let's just fill it up a little bit to the 550-ish mark. There we go. Happy with that. And this is kind of like a hardener. It will make the lacquer set. So I'm going to mix it up. Find a stick. Should have found one first. Okay, got myself a chopstick out of the drawer. A little mix up just make sure it's mixed properly 
I remember this being a lot more smelly than what it was. The last time I've used this lacquer was maybe about five years ago, something like that. And it's not that smelly. They must have changed the um, ingredients or the mixture of it because it's not by this point I would have been holding my breath. I'm going to work straight out the tub with the brush and um, go around the borders. Okay, I feel that a little bit too high. And yeah, I could have masked up, but... I'm not too bad at cutting in. It doesn't have to be a work of art as long as it covers. It's my own house at the end of the day. And it's not fussy, this stuff. I'm going to cut in at about 50 mil wide. So when I come in with my roller, um, it's not hassle to try and get the remaining with the roller. Also, any awkward spaces, I'm going to come out a little bit more as well. So anywhere where my roller can't get to, use my brush and cut in a little bit further into the fl floor space. So the parts that I sanded back to the softwood, they're going to soak the lacquer in literally straight away. It's going to suck it straight up. That's going to lead me, and then, well, that kind of leads me to think that this is three coats in total. Second coat straight after sanding it back to a softwood with nothing on the top isn't going to be enough in my eyes. All the cutting in is done, and it's caught to three. Went around all the edges, as you can see in the light all the way around the edges and as I was doing it I was a bit tempted to just touch up all the white spots so I did that too just to give it a little helping hand and you can see all the little wet patches there and that is basically me touching up all the raw softwood bits so that's kind of like nearly dry now it's been just literally finished it but I started down this end and I finished down this end so this is kind of like near enough dry so by the time I mix up another batch for the roller, it should all be ready to um, walk over and just give a solid roll with the nine inch gloss roller. And this is what it looks like so far. I'm just happy that it's all flake free now. I don't care about the color. I just wanna make sure that it's nice and sound to give me another five or six years worth of life. Okay, half an hour later, I've just mixed up this batch here. So we've got one more to go. Just stirred it up, gonna pour that in to the tray, we are good to roll. So let's set up the camera. I'm gonna start down the window end and work my way back to the exit. Otherwise, if I start down here and finish down there, I won't be able to get out. I'm gonna start in the corner. Got myself a little bit of doweling to fit on this roller because I lost my roller stick. But anyway, let's go for it, eh? So you just got to do it methodically, do it in little squares. These nine inch gloss rollers are brilliant. And before I started spraying, I used to use these. I used to have all my MDF components, my wardrobes out on trestles, a dozen trestles or so. I had ladders that went across the trestles. And then I laid the components on top of the ladders. And then I was able to just use these nine inch gloss rollers with the paint I use now to do my spraying to roller it on um, quickly. It also gave me a nice consistent finish because the, the roller is so big, it covers a lot, you, less, you need less up and downs. I bought a batch of these in bulk. They're the Pro Deck ones. I'll see if I can leave a link in the description for you. So the beauty about cutting them first is that I could just go for it now. I don't need to be neat and tidy, just as long as I go with them um, two inches of the wall or my sim or whatever should be fine i want to get it on my sim so if this was a job for someone else i definitely would have taken my time a little bit more on it but because i've got the kids coming tomorrow i really need to get this finished because it's a little bit smelly i need to really finish this off and let it dry it would be nice to get another two more coats on today don't know if that's possible even if i get it done in the morning because while they're at school it can be dry and have the windows open so after this pot um, I would have used a litre. So I tried to go for a sheen that matched my last finish, and I think I had 30% last time, um, going by what I had left over in the workshop spray room. was hoping that um, it, it's the same finish, uh, mainly because when I do peel off the plastic around the simulator, um, then anything that I didn't sand and lacquer inside it, you're not going to notice the finish difference, the sheen difference, if it's the same. There was hardly any wear and tear down that end anyway. 
That sim has been there for five years. Got this hard work. I'll show you what we've done so far. So it's still going to look a little bit patchy. Um, they are the bits that were sanded back to raw timber, even though they had a touch up with the brush first. I think three coats is what it's going to need. Well, I'm going to start my right hand and work my way to the left this time because I'm right handed. I think it's going to work best for me. Now, it looks like I'm running out, so I need to top this up. I'm going to mix up another half a litre now. All right, so let's see how quick we can do this. Shouldn't take long. Let's go for the same amount, 500 mils, about 45 mil or so of hardener. Happy days, that's it. I'm chuck that in the pot. So I didn't really give it a hard going around the edges with the sander. I could just leave out the cutting in once more around the edges and just go for two coats of this. I didn't really hit the edges hard whatsoever. So I think one coat of cutting in is absolutely fine. So realistically, I just need to do this two more times and it should be fine. I may cut in around the window ledge a little bit more because there's a little bit of wear and tear there where I come in and out the, the house with wet feet and maybe around the sim. So it just looks nice and solid. Everywhere else I'm not really fussed about. So on a job like this, preparation is probably the longest part of the job. Sanding it back took me about five hours in total. And I'm starting to get a little bit bored. Um, if those bits of lacquer weren't peeling and it was just like a recondition, just go over the floor, just a quick blitz with a sander, maybe an hour and a half. But because I was just going over all those loose bits of lacquer, that's where all the time went. If I didn't do that properly, it would have just looked like a dog's dinner. All right, this is where I, the cutting in comes in handy because I don't need to go all the way up against the wall. Looks like that half of the room is done. Two layers left. Work my way towards the exit, which is right behind me. So when I do this kind of um, job, I don't skimp on how much lacquer. At the end of the day, the floor takes what it takes. So there's no point trying to thin it out, trying to like squeeze every little bit out of the roller. Firstly, it'll just look patchy at the end. And secondly, it's just not the way you do it. You just need to put on um, what you need. That's why I'm doing a little section at a time, getting the same amount on the roller. Trying to do two to three planks at a time. Spread it out as much as I can to start on the first couple of strokes. And then just go up and down, up and down, up and down, just to make sure it's completely covered. Everything. Right, what I might do is work my way from the left now. So wherever I come to about there. So this lacquer is quick drying, so I've been doing this layer here for about 20 minutes now, this first coat. By the time I'm finished, which will be another 10 minutes, I'd say another half an hour after that, I'll be able to do my second coat. Alexa, what's the time? Alexa, what's the time? 3.13 p.m. I didn't set the alarm. Who set the alarm? Oh, God, it's so crap. <sighs> Oh, this kills you back. All right. Nearly there. There we go. Last section. Let's see if we can uh, get the camera over here. It's basically, what I need to do is this little corner and then move over to the other corner and then work my way towards this corner again. <laughs> right. Okay, that corner's done. I can open this up now. So this is what we've got so far. I've just done behind that door. Got this section left to do, do so I'm working from that end all the way to then get to the door. But yeah, let's go and mix up one last batch. If I don't use it all, it doesn't matter. And the price for one of these tubs is about 56 
quid. I'll leave a link in the description for the one I used. I just think anything that's two pack is probably a lot stronger. Yeah, I was really happy with it. So I'm just going to stick to what I know with and not have what I know is pretty damn solid. Let me go and let's cover that up once more. This is the beauty of the cutting in at the beginning, isn't it? Makes all the bulky rolling easy. Well, it's a bit fumey now. Gonna let that dry maybe another half an hour 45 minutes it should be dry enough to go in so this is time for a second coat first coat is dried it's four o'clock now it's been about i don't know half an hour ish since i finished um i'm walking on it now so it's dry enough to walk on um so for me it's good enough to put the second coat on i'm just going to do the same again now i'm not going to film it but i'll show you the results at the end it's just the same technique get to the end and you never know we might still get three coats done tonight okay tell a little lie i am going to just film a little bit just to show you how second coat changes those dry patches just to show you if the dry patches disappear on the second coat should look a lot more uniform on this coat also right finished less patchy So there we go, that is the first layer, as you can see, it's looking a lot more shiny. Can't really see the patches, I'm going to carry on now the same. So second coat is done, as you can see it's looking a little bit more shiny now. Aiming to get third coat done now, need to get my air fryer out so I can make some dinner and bring it into my front room. So there we go, all done. Really happy with the way it came out. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. Probably see the patches where I sanded back to the softwood. So if I did denib or sand back between first and second coat, especially on the bits where I went back to the softwoods, then they wouldn't be as matte finished. They would be shiny like the rest. Um, it's only because they're kind of rough feeling. So that is the only difference. They've all had three coats, but remember I did go over all the patches by hand with a brush first so technically the bits that went back to pine had four coats um, everything else had three so really really chuffed so I'll pick up the camera and I'll tell you how much materials I used so I ended up using um, about 15 p80 discs maybe a bit more 20 they just dulled quite quickly um, I did start with 120 but then I decided no that wasn't enough and um, yeah, moved on to the 180s pretty instantly from about this section on. The lacquer that I used, I literally had enough, just about enough for the last pass, that literally the last square over there, I was kind of like scrimping out of the tray. So the five liters was absolutely dead on, okay? Um, I thought I was gonna have spare, but I didn't. For the three coats, I've worked out that this whole room is seven and a half meters long by about four and a half meters wide, which works out about 33, 34 square meters, times that by three coats, and that is 102. So basically I've stretched that lacquer to 102 square meters worth of rolling, and including the cutting in once all the way around, not skimping at all. And plus I went over all these little raw patches, okay? So for example, over here, I brushed that by hand, brushed that by hand, brushed the little white bits by hand, um, so yeah, five liters went a long way and the sheen around the sim, I did cut in around, but you cannot notice it now. So happy about that. That was what I was worried about. I went all the way around. You can't see where I brushed in. So there we go, guys. Happy days. If you have enjoyed our content, just remember we're at 43,000 subscribers now. If you want to add to that, feel free to um, like and subscribe, the usual. Other than that, guys, have a great Sunday. 
I'll see you next Sunday. Take it easy. Ciao for now.